Shelby, otherwise known as Shelby Zill here on YouTube, and we are back for another I Try to Do is Grocery Shopping at Whole Foods. Now, for my Texas viewers out there, I've been seeing your requests for an HEB video, and it's coming, okay? But I find HEB really easy to grocery shop zero waste at. That's where I shopped most of my life, well actually all of my adult life, that's my favorite grocery store until I moved to the city and then I started going to places like Central Market, Whole Foods, more and um, Whole Foods is more accessible to people outside of just Texas so H-E-B is coming but let's do the ones that everybody has first just to be fair. So I'm gonna head to Whole Foods today, I do not expect this to be a hard one, I expect this to be quite an easy one so I am essentially just going grocery shopping for my meal prep that I'm gonna be working on today, taking you guys along with me and we'll see just how easy it is to grocery shop at Whole Foods. Obviously Whole Foods does have some issues. Um, their pricing is not super affordable for I know a lot of people's budgets and they're not accessible to everyone but they are more accessible to my audience than just H-E-B would be. But anyway, let's get going. All right guys, so I made it to Whole Foods. I always show you before I go in what I brought. So I brought three of my little collapsible Chico bags. These are amazing. You can put them in your bag or on your keychain like this, and then they turn into a full-size grocery bag. So I always bring these when I'm by myself and just picking up a few things. And I always also bring my collapsible produce bags by Chico. They fold up to be this small, and these guys stay in my bag as well. So let's head inside. All right, first things first, say it with me. We have to walk the store and see what we can get package-free first. There's a lot of package-free produce at Whole Foods, but there's also a bulk section. And this bulk section made me ecstatic because they had an actual sign that said you can bring your own containers. I've never seen that at another Whole Foods or other like general grocery store. So the fact that they had a sign makes me feel really, really good. One of the issues I faced a lot is walking into them and getting different like rules from different managers. So having a sign that says I can do it will make my life a lot easier when it comes to trying to bring my own containers. But I usually just trade those plastic bags for my own bag and then instead of getting those little tie wraps I will show you what I do to keep track of the PLU numbers which is how they know what item you have you have to know what the PLU code is so that they can weigh it and then know how much uh, the item that you got is per pound generally when I'm shopping at Whole Foods I'm stocking up on things that I can't get uh, places that are closer to my house because since we moved I'm not terribly close to a bulk shop that lets me bring my own containers. So here I'm stocking up on some basmati rice. Uh, rice is always something that I try to get in bulk. Um, anything I can get in bulk, I guess, is when I try to stock up when I see it. And then what I do is I keep the PLU codes in my phone. This is not the most convenient thing for your checker, but it will help you avoid those tie wraps and stickers as well, just to write it down as you go. Uh, I was also really impressed that these guys had olive oil. I was really nervous after we moved and after ingredients shut down in Austin that I wouldn't be able to find another place that would let me refill my oil. And they will let you do that at this Whole Foods. So I am stoked on that. So I did need a ton of stuff from the bulk section, but I did want to go and check out the produce section because one thing I can never seem to find without packaging are Brussels sprouts. My options here were in a net or in a plastic bag. So we will skip that for this time because I do know that if I do make the trek, it is a literal trek, over to Central Market, I can get them there. I went ahead and put a Honeycrisp apple in my cart just because it's my favorite snack. And since Whole Foods seem to be an easier place to find unpackaged goods, I thought it would be fun to compare the prices of what it costs to buy something packaged 
versus unpackaged because sometimes it can be more expensive or it can be cheaper. So you could see here, you could get 1.2 pounds of butternut squash for seven, almost $7, but buying it unpackaged is only $1.69 per pound. So that's a huge savings. But then I decided it wouldn't be fair to only compare that. So here you can get a pound of potatoes for $1. And I was curious how much a pound of potatoes looked like. I never really weigh my stuff before I go to the checkout, but it looks like each potato is roughly a pound. So that's basically a dollar per potato, which seems pretty stinking steep, especially since I went around to the other side to look at the packaged ones where you could get packages of like over a dozen of them for as cheap as three bucks. So that kind of is a little disappointing because the package product in this situation was significantly cheaper, but the butternut squash situation was significantly um, more expensive to get it packaged. So you need to weigh your options there. I never want to advocate buying something just because it's package free and to completely ignore the price of it but it is something to keep in mind like certain products might be easier cheaper some of them might be more expensive but i think in the end the options generally weigh out to be uh, positive in your favor now i want to hear from you in the comments have you ever seen package free snap peas because this is a rare find my friends this whole foods had quite a few things that were rare finds you see that butter lettuce right there in plastic that's actually a locally grown one in texas and the one i would normally buy but i found package free snap peas and then i found package free butter lettuce yes my friends if you have been watching my channel for a while you know this is something i've struggled with for quite some time trying to find butter lettuce without plastic and this whole foods had my back and i could have done a little dance i mean i, I might have done a little dance just off camera Alrighty, guys i left the produce in bulk section very happy woman there was basically everything i needed package free except for Brussels sprouts, and I'm still really bummed about that. They're pretty hard to find package free. Central Market has them sometimes. Now I am surrounded by plastic, but I wanted to show you the hot bar here too because you can also bring your own container there, and their containers are actually compostable anyway. So um, it's a cool place to get some ingredients package free if they don't have them anywhere else, and sometimes there are raw Brussels sprouts there. So that might be a wholesome tax. Let's go find out. videos I pick a recipe I go there or I see what's there and then I try to make a recipe for one meal but I figured let's explore the meat alternatives and see if there's anything that comes with minimal plastic I doubt there's anything that comes with none but let's check it out So I used to buy corn chicken nuggets back when I was just a vegetarian, not super strict on veganism or anything like that. Um, and they don't have any plastic in them. But unfortunately, someone told me recently they have eggs in them. Uh, so I was checking the ingredients list to make sure that that was true. And it is. What a bummer. I really shouldn't be near the beauty stuff since I'm on a no-buy. And yet here I am. Here's a really small no buy update for you. I was walking around the beauty section, knowing I couldn't buy anything, convinced myself that sunscreen is a necessity so that I could buy it just to buy something, and then realized what I was doing and didn't buy any because I already had sunscreen at home. Why was I doing that? I don't freaking know, but anyway. Um, and then I also wanted to show you guys, they do always have like a package free soap section. I've never been to one that didn't have it. Um, and that's always really exciting. I then was wandering around the like more packaged food sections 
to see if they had any other things I couldn't get anywhere else because there are things there but for some reason they weren't coming to the top of my mind and then I got really excited because I found one of my favorite things ever you guys I'm finding so many cool things I should have left a long time ago but this is a vegan mac and cheese you hear it there's no plastic bag in there I'm sure the cheese inside comes in some sort of not paper but it's better than the rest of them. Let me see if Daya actually, does it have a bag in there? Oh, maybe it doesn't either. I don't know. I thought it was cool. All right, so I opened up my Chico bags. About to head to the checkout, but I walked past here, these breakfast things, and realized that they have meatless options in the regular meat section, which is pretty cool at this Whole Foods look. I'm gonna turn it around and show you. This is not the vegetarian section. It's just like next to all the breakfast stuff. So I thought that was really, really, good to get people who are not just looking for plant-based alternatives kind of seeing it all right let's head to the checkout I can only get there so I usually stock up on those things they're also now that I moved the closest shop that I can get certain things in bulk so I'll get things like that um, I didn't get everything really to make one recipe in this shop but I'll just show you what I got anyway zero waste grocery shopping at Whole Foods is pretty easy and probably the most exciting find was butter lettuce without packaging in a bag, in my own bag. I've never seen package-free butter lettuce at the store before, so score for you, Whole Foods. Other things we got, rice. I needed to stock up on this. Um, I am making a meal prep video. I need this for that. This is basmati rice. Always good to have the essentials in your home. Snap peas are another rare find without plastic, but Whole Foods had my back today, so those are a thumbs up. Honeycrisp apple, probably gonna eat this guy like right now. And garlic, because you can never have too much garlic, but it's not the easiest thing to find package free, I've started to realize. So whenever I see it, I pick one up, I go through it like, uh, like garlic. <laughs> so those are the things I got completely package free, but the rest of the things are like, Minimal plastic, I guess. Some of them actually have plastic on them and we'll talk about that, but I got two of these Victoria Vegan Alfredo sauces. These are, I wouldn't say they're too hard to find. I found them at Walmart before, actually. I hate shopping at Walmart, so whenever I go to Whole Foods, stock up on these. I've also seen them at Randall's if you live near Randall's. And you can buy them on Amazon, but that's not my favorite thing to do. I'm waiting for them to come to Thrive Market. I've been waiting for that forever. But um, yeah, people tell me all the time you can make your own. You can't make this. This is so, so mind-blowingly good. So if you see this at your local store, pick those up. Pasta is something I cannot find in bulk to save my life. Even at Whole Foods, there is one kind of pasta in bulk at Central Market, but it's not my favorite. I already have it stocked up there. So I just buy it in these, and they have these little plastic windows. Um, it's really frustrating, but this is actually really affordable at Whole Foods. Um, the most, ex uh, most expensive, the most affordable one at Whole Foods is by their brand, and it's organic. Not that that matters that much to me, but added bonus. So I get a couple of these, and I keep it in this guy. Just so that I don't have to worry about using it all up at once or bugs getting into it, I keep it in this one. And when I left for the grocery store, I looked around and said, what do I need to replenish on? Uh, and this was definitely one of them, so made sure to pick up some rigatoni while I'm out. That actually is a really good thing about this shelf. Whenever something's empty, whenever I don't have something, it's very obvious because I can see all of them whenever I'm leaving for the store. Literally just look, know what's usually in each of those containers and then pick it up when I'm at the store, which is also how I knew I needed rice because I looked and I said, do we have rice? No, we don't. So, okay. <laughs> Continuing. Then I had to get some Beyond Meat stuff. They're, I think, the only people who sell 
beyond me around here is Whole Foods. HEB doesn't have it. Madison went to like three HEBs the other day and they none of them had it, which is a little disappointing. Even though one of them said that they did, they didn't. So stocking up on these. These, like I said, have plastic on them. These specifically, uh, they have plastic on the back too. They want them to look more like real meat. Like they sometimes have these in the meat section right next to real burgers. Real burgers, I hate when people say that and here I am saying it, but they sometimes have these next to meat burgers. So they want them to look as realistic as the real thing as possible, even though the bottom is in plastic. And their sausages though, this is why I really like Beyond Meat because I feel like they're doing everything they can to reduce their impact. This is um, their Italian spicy sausages. Again, I can only find them at Whole Foods. This is in cardboard, so the back is in cardboard compostable. And then it is wrapped in a thin plastic film, but this is the most minimal plastic I've ever seen a meat alternative product come in so I like these and I like that they come packaged the way that they do so got a couple of these guys got one of the sausages because they're my fave you can't leave Whole Foods without getting a kombucha so health aid uh, pink apple I also like the grape one I've actually never tried a health aid kombucha I didn't like there are kombuchas out there I don't like but health aid is always pretty top-notch well I have one more tip for you guys that I didn't think about until I was there but if you notice I didn't get any spices or flowers or anything like that and that's usually my struggle because most um, grocery stores around here even that have bulk bins are not as openly uh, telling you you can use your own like jars and stuff luckily this whole food said you can like they openly have a sign that says you can bring your own which is amazing and I'm so excited to have found that near me but um, if you don't have that, there's two things you can do. Obviously, you can bring really lightweight produce bags like this one that I put the rice in. But you can see that it has little holes. Yeah, see, it has holes, just like a traditional mesh bag. And obviously, these are fine for a lot of things at the bulk stores. Any nuts, seeds, grains, this will work, just a regular mesh bag. But whenever you go to buy like spices or flowers or sugars or anything like that, it can be a little bit harder because you need something that has no holes or else obviously like sugar would get through this. So you can do two things. One, you can use the bags that they provide. This Whole Foods actually had like produce looking bags for their bulk section. That's a little weird because most of them have like the harder plastic bags, especially for spices, you can get those harder plastic like Ziploc bags. You can use those and just reuse them over and over and over again, especially if your Whole Foods isn't as open about you being able to bring your own containers as this one was. Or what you can do is I have um, both of my produce bag sets from Chico have one of these in them. Um, and basically, let me see if I can show you. You can see this one is like a completely nylon. There's no holes in there. If you were to put sugar or spices in one of these, it would not it would not be able to get through. Really cool thing about Chico bags too is they have the tearaway already on them, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, if the people you're checking out with do allow you to tear your things, the weight is already there for you to tell them, so that's cool. So I have this one. Uh, it's a smaller one. It's kind of like a sandwich bag size. And then I have another one, like this one, um, it's a bit bigger so you can get things like flour or something in it if you need to those are by Chico I'm always telling you guys my bags are by Chico. I think they make great quality products um, I get them from Earth Hero or actually one of them I got from a subscriber turned friend Bailey and then um, Then I started buying Chico bags and then I realized Earth Hero sells them so you can get these on Earth Hero I have a 10% off code with them. I'll link it in the description. It's not sponsored, but I love them. So these will be in the description in case you're looking for something like that. I hope this video was really helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about bulk shopping, about zero waste grocery shopping, about shopping at Whole Foods, or if you have a suggestion for which store I should do next, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in my next video. And remember, until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys. The startup over the last five years has been able to upcycle over 65 million items of clothing, which is the mind-blowing number to try and conceptualize for most Americans, I'm sure. Yeah. So I want to know, how do you guys organize that much material? What, <laughs> what is the journey of a piece of clothing that enters a ThreadUp warehouse? What does it go through? Every day across ThreadUp, we are processing around 100,000 items it, just to kind of like picture imagine in your head how many items that is that's like 12 you know like the big tj maxx stores that's like 12 of them a day wow